Okay, hello and welcome. Uh, so this video is going to be a beginner's tips on how to play Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Um, a friend requested this video and I thought I'd start it up before Afterbirth comes out so that he can hopefully get into the game and you know enjoy it when the expansion hits. So let's go ahead and get started. I figured for this that I would create a new save file because that way I can better emulate what a brand new player is going to see you know, you won't see all the crazy shenanigans you have with a fully developed save like I normally have. So let's go ahead and start up a new file. Uh, most of the characters, I think all the characters are locked at first. And the only character you have is Isaac. Isaac's still a pretty good character though. So we're starting out. Um, let's kind of go over some real basics. Uh, Isaac starts with one bomb, zero coins, zero keys, three hearts, and a pretty decent stat spread. So when you're starting the game, uh, what you really want to do is find the item room on the first floor. Luckily we got it right away. When you get an item, uh, if you know what it is, go ahead and grab it. You know, if it's good for you, take it right away without hesitation. If you're not sure, it's best to check the wiki and try and figure things out and decide if they're good for your current run or not. Um, you'll notice I put out all the fires. Uh, fires do have a relatively low chance of dropping items, so when you're starting out in the beginning, it's kind of good to get some extra bombs or keys or coins. Now, PhD is a really good item. I'm going to go ahead and grab it. What it does is it replaces all of the bad pills in the game with good or neutral pills. And it also identifies them for you. So I see now I have a full health pill. Great. I'm going to hang on to that for now because healing at full health isn't going to do shit for me. So I want to keep that for when I need it. Pick up this bomb. Put out these fires. And just keep looking for stuff. Your primary goal while playing Binding of Isaac is to take as little damage as possible. Um, you're probably going to take some when you start, but that's okay. Just focus on taking as little as you can. Uh, you know, you're going to get better over time, especially as you learn the patterns, but when you start out, just focus on taking little damage, and dealing damage will come naturally as you take less damage. These guys just kind of float around. Got quite a bit of bombs, which is good. Um, I'm going to keep looking. Uh, you typically want to clear the whole floor. Uh, this room is a sacrifice spike room. You can use it to hurt yourself by walking over the spikes to get some items if you hurt yourself enough. Actually, since I have a full health pill, I'm going to go ahead and hurt myself a little bit. It didn't give me anything. I usually don't use those pretty much for the reason you saw, and that you hurt yourself a lot and you don't really get anything out of it. Um... So Sometimes they're good, like if you perp really do want to lower your health, certain items play off of you having low health, and so if you have something like that, great, go ahead and hurt yourself. Uh, otherwise, they're probably better to just ignore when you're new to the game. This boss, Duke of Flies, is really easy. You can see all he does is float around and spawn flies. Um, there's really not much to him, just stay away, and keep peppering him with tears as you can. If you really want to get risky, or wild, what you could do is try and put a bomb in the path you think he's going to fly into. But, you know, it's not really worth it unless you have a lot of bombs, or you know really where he's going to go, or you're just feeling like going fast. You can see that I focus on killing the flies first, and that's because I know if I don't, pretty soon there's going to be too many flies for me to deal with. Especially on Isaac, who has relatively low damage output. So it's good for you to just kind of kill the ads and just keep yourself safe, like I said. Don't worry about going fast right away. Bosses almost always drop uh, red hearts after they're killed, so that's a good way, you know, if you're low on health and you think you can take the boss, go ahead and kill the boss first. Get some hearts. Now, so now we're on Basement 2. So something to note that doesn't happen on Basement 1, but on Basement 2 you have a chance to get a Devil Deal room. Uh, on Basement 2, it is guaranteed that you will get a Devil Deal room if you don't take any red heart damage on the floor. So, if you can, it is ideal to just try and avoid getting hit as much as you can on this floor in particular. 
Uh, poop like torches also, like in case, has a chance to drop items. So again, if you're low on supplies like keys, coins, or bombs, uh, break open poop, uh, put out fires, look for what you can. You'll notice that the item room on floor 2 is locked. Only the first floor item room is free. Everything after that you need a key to get, so you're going to want to keep an eye on your keys. Uh, keys also let you into the shop, as well as there's some special rooms that require keys. Uh, ooh, that was close. Usually, you want to try and keep as few keys as possible because with bombs you can use them offensively. Uh, keys you can't really do anything with if you have a bunch of them, so if you've got a bunch of spare keys, just open locked stuff for no real reason, I mean, other than to spend your keys. Uh, these red fires can shoot uh, tears at you that will hurt you. Um, blow this up real quick and I'll explain why. Son of a bitch. Uh, you might have to rewind the video to see what I did, but there was a rock there that was marked with an X. Those are known as tinted rocks, and they will always include something if you blow them up. So, keep an eye out for them. They get a little harder to notice as you progress in the floors, but uh, they do have a static pattern of what they look like. So if you're not sure, look it up on the wiki and you can get a good image of what they look like. <laughs> So far I've done pretty good at not taking damage, which is good, because I can get that double deal room. Um, double deal rooms, the devil offers you items, and to pay for them you have to pay with actual hearts. So you like lower your maximum number of hearts to get the items he offers. Uh, they're typically the best items in the game, so uh, it's good to try and store up extra red hearts so that you can buy the devil deal items when they drop. You'll see I'm collecting some money. I don't break open these other spots just because for a bomb... Actually, this one I'll do it. Um, you're kind of trying to measure how much you're spending to get back. So there I spent one bomb to get three coins. It's a pretty good trade. I'm going to check and see if the secret room is here. It is. Because as I mentioned in one of my last videos, uh, the secret room is typically on the minimap in an area where it's touching the most adjacent rooms. So if you look at your mini-map, you'll see, okay, this room is adjacent to three rooms. Uh, it's a pretty good chance it's going to be here. Yeah. Other than that, it's most commonly next to the shop, so you want to keep an eye out for spots that kind of butt up against the shop like that. Now, because I bombed my way into the secret room, I can actually bomb open this wall from the inside, too, and get into the item room, even though I don't have a key. I forget what this item is. I'm gonna grab it. It's uh, okay. cursed eyes. Not very good. Um, you can read on the wiki as to why it's not very powerful, but oh well. That's kind of the risk you run when you don't know all the items. Okay, so now we're gonna fight Dingle. This is actually gonna be a little interesting because um, cursed eyes is not very good for fighting Dingle. Shit. Okay, well I probably fucked myself by picking up Cursed Eye. Um, as you see, when you're charging up the shot with Cursed Eye, if something hits you, you get teleported out of the room. Um, that's not good, obviously, because chances are you're probably going to get hit while charging up pretty frequently. And it sends you out of the room, which in this case reset the boss status. Now as I'm fighting Dingle, uh, I'm paying attention on a couple things on him. Dingle has a few tells. Uh, which you'll probably notice. Uh, when he smiles, he shoots the triple spread bullets. When he whistles, he summons little poops, and then he shoots. And when he makes that little angry face, he's going to charge at you. So you want to just keep an eye on the boss, um, most importantly, more than where you are, really, because you, know, you just point in the direction of the boss and fire. It's like here, I'm getting a little distracted because there's a bunch of little ads everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, just keep circling around Dingle, uh, watching out for his shots and his charges, and firing him when he's open. Okay, and he's dead. Got a soul heart, that's great. Uh, so soul hearts, which are these blue hearts, you've probably heard me mentioning them before, are different from... Son of a bitch. Different from red hearts in that you cannot heal a soul heart when you lose it. It just goes away. Um, they're typically better than red hearts. Uh, if you watch my previous video, you'll see why. Mostly because they are 
not something you can get back, and it's better to get those because you can't get more than what you have. Okay, so I'm in the Devil Deal room. Um, you see the heart value listed here. That's how much it costs to pick up either of these items. There's the shovel, which lets me skip a floor, and Dead Cat, which gives me nine extra lives, essentially. Or it, But it also reduces all my hearts down to one. Um, neither of these are very good, so I'm going to skip over them. Alrighty, so in the caves, can't get that. So as you get further down into the dungeon, uh, the monsters you fight change. So each each set floor, like the basement above me and the caves I'm in now, have different monster groupings that appear like in that area. So there's some monsters that only appear in the basement, some monsters only appear in the caves, etc, etc. Uh, some are shared between all of them, but you'll learn the monster groups pretty quickly. So now that I have Cursed Eye, I have to be extra careful not to get hit because I can get teleported back to room and reset the whole room I was in. Uh, rooms only really empty out when you kill everything in the room, otherwise they just reset to the state they were in when you left. Or not the state they were in, but the default state when you leave and re-enter. There's a couple ways you can leave and re-enter a room. Uh, teleporting out of the room is one, like you saw in my fight against Dingle. Or alternatively, uh, if you have a bomb, you can bomb open a door to a room and basically create a one-way exit for yourself. Uh, it's typically not a good strategy to do that. There are points when it's good though, especially later in the game if you don't feel like fighting certain things. Um, just bomb open the door and skip past them. Son of a bitch. Um, so one thing you'll note... Uh, I did pick up PhD in the beginning of this run, so all of my pills are positive, and I know what they are right away. Uh, normally, in the game, the pills show up as a bunch of question marks until you use them. When you use the pill, it will reveal that effect for that game, and then it's randomized each run. So, it's a little risky to use pills if you're not sure what they are, but generally I find that the positive effects outweigh the negatives. So. Unless you're, like, really in a bad situation, I would just go ahead and use it. And then, you know, either something good happens, or you find out that that pill is bad, and you know not to use it in a different or a dangerous situation later in the run. So far, this run's going okay. Um, I've gotten the Magic Mushroom, which gives me plus one to all stats. That's good, because it increases my damage. As I mentioned in my other video, uh, damage up is basically the best stat in the game. Uh, you always want to be getting damage up. Okay, so this is Chubb. He's a very simple boss. He has one attack, and that's to charge at you. He'll only charge at you when he gets uh, in your, like in a cross shaped area next to you. You can kind of see I can goad him into attacks. Something to watch out for on Chubb is that if you hit him while he's charging, it'll cause a slight deviation in his charge path, and that can cause him to run into you if you're strafing in a direction and you hit him and he moves into that direction. Now, I'm going to do something a little weird with this. Uh, what I did right there is that uh, I tricked, or I goaded Chubb into attacking me, and when he attacked me, I went ahead and dropped down a bomb. He ran over the bomb, swallowed it, and blew himself up, dealing a lot of damage to him at the cost of a bomb. Um, a lot of bosses have opportunities for you to use bombs, and if you can kind of figure them out, they're a really good way to speed up a boss run. So something else special happened. Uh, I got a Angel Room. Angel Rooms are like Devil Rooms, in that they only appear at the end of the level, and if you only take like low amounts of damage. Um, the difference with them is that Angel Rooms are free. They do not cost hearts, and so you can pick them up guilt-free. Uh, they're also typically not that great, and... Or I shouldn't say they're not great, but their items aren't as good as the Devil items. Um, angel versus Devil Rooms, they're, they're tied to the same part of losing damage, but there are hidden stats known as, I think, Sin and Faith. Um, there's a variety of things that affect them, and if you really want to know more, I would suggest reading the wiki pages on those particular 
mechanics because the wiki will do a much better job of explaining them than I can. Nice thing about what I got, well the one I got is I got Flight. Uh, Flight's a very powerful mechanic in this game because it lets you collect items and move places you normally couldn't go. It also gives me Spectral Tears which lets my tears pass through obstacles like rocks or other things. Um, oddly enough, uh, Spectral Tears also seem to break poop much slower. I think it has something weird to do with the way the physics interact with the tears. But other than that, they're typically they're an upgrade because breaking poop obviously is not a priority. So you can see here, because I have flight, I can kind of just hang out in the middle and safely avoid all these monsters. So flight's pretty strong. Um, I would recommend, if you can, getting flight. There's a variety of items that grant flight. So pretty much if you have the chance to, go ahead and get it. It's going to save you a lot of damage and get you a lot more items than you would otherwise. As an aside, I really hate charge shots in this game, uh, except for Broomstone because it's good. But things like Cursed Eye and Chocolate Milk I really fucking hate because I find it hard to hit things reliably. Uh, something to note as you get further down, you notice this room has a health bar like a boss. That's because this monster is, in fact, actually a boss. Um, that's really bad. Again, this is an item I know is bad, so I'm not going to pick it up because it'll probably just get me killed. So I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, as you get further into the game, you will encounter bosses just as regular enemies. Um, personally, I find that as you play the game more, the bosses have easier to deal with mechanics than the regular enemies. So it's actually kind of advantageous to get those rooms with bosses. Just gonna keep blowing up these guys. So you can kind of see how my playstyle has already changed um, just based on the items I got. Um, because I have flight, because I have the charge shot and the spectral tears, I'm and I got a range up pill. I can actually stay pretty far back and hit enemies. And so I play it a little defensively, you know. I don't want to get hit because of this cursed eye. So instead I'm just gonna sort of manu outmaneuver enemies and stay as far as I can reliably away and hit them. In this case, I'm staying a little close because these guys move really slow, but... Because I can fly over these pits, you could imagine how this room would be a lot harder if I couldn't do so. You might notice there, if you kind of rewind a bit, I think the pretty fly that I picked up a lot earlier in the run uh, actually blocked a few shots for me. <sighs> okay. I'm um, not getting very good luck on what I'm picking up here. Uh, the pretty fly is what's considered an orbital. Uh, these things, when something like a bullet or other projectile hits the orbital, it acts like it hit an obstacle and doesn't hit you. So effectively, it's like a meat shield. Um, orbitals are amazing. If you can get three orbitals, which is the max, you're practically immune to bullet fire for the rest of the game. Fuck, I almost picked that thing up on accident. <laughs> um, another thing to note, uh, in the shop, I picked up the piggy bank. Uh, Wiki has its description. That's not really the important part. Uh, what's important to note is that the shop always has an item, like an actual you know, gold room item that you will be able to purchase. Uh, the normal price of this item is always 15 coins. It could be on sale for half that, but, you know, usually 15 is what you're looking at to get that item. So, my rule of thumb, just for myself, it's probably not, like, an actual strategy that anyone else uses, but I typically don't go in the shop unless I have 15 coins, because that way I know if there's a good item, that I can buy it. Shit, I got hit. Uh, what else? There's something else I wanted to mention. Oh, this thing, the donation box. Um, so donation boxes are items that you put money into, and they basically just store the money. Um, the reason this sounds kind of dumb or probably weird is that 
it doesn't do anything for your current run, but what'll happen is later on, if you encounter a donation box on a subsequent run, you can use a bomb to blow up the donation box and get some of the money you put in back. So this is a good way to kind of leave yourself money in the case where you're doing a run and you have a lot of other good items, you go into the shop and there's an item you really want but you can't afford it, so you use the donation box to get a couple extra coins and pick up that item. Uh, there is a maximum number of coins you can put into the item box, or the donation box, at any given time. And when it maxes out, you'll notice it changes face like it did for me. Uh, this boss is really crappy. I hate him. Um, would not be surprised if I get killed here because my cursed eye keeps sending me out of the room. Um, you'll notice the glowing blood he leaves on the floor. That is harmful to Isaac, so it does damage to him, except because I'm flying, it does not. So flying also makes you immune to ground effects like that. So again, another really good reason to pick up flying. Yeah, I really just don't like this boss because his leap attack thing is really easy for you to get hit by. I feel he's a little cheesy, but once you get him into a good pattern, you're able to do pretty good against him. Um, not really getting the best of items from this run, but at the same time, this is a brand new save file, so as you continue to play the game, you'll unlock more items to drop, and you'll probably see your win rate just increase just on the fact that you're more likely to get good items. The Dead Dove is doing some good work for me, though, because I can fly over stuff and I can pretty much just avoid monsters. Oh, here's a good another thing. So because I can fly over this, I can just pick up all these bombs without even having the keys. I'm really low on keys, which is hurting me in this run, but I'm doing okay otherwise. This room is a challenge room. Uh, you can tell by the blue sword and on the minimap and the cross swords over the doorway. You can only enter this room if you have hearts equal to your maximum health in red hearts. So that means either having full red hearts or enough blue hearts to effectively fill your red hearts. Inside the room you'll find a chest like this. And when you open it, a bunch of enemies spawn. Uh, you have to fight all the enemies. And they come in three waves. Um, they're all regular enemies. There's only a couple configurations of what enemies spawn, so... These rooms are usually really easy. Um, the, I'm not really sure why they're called challenge rooms. I don't even know if they're actually called that, I just call them that, but... Uh, if you can go into them, go into them. There's really no reason not to go into this. There's a variant of these rooms called a boss challenge room. That's what I call it. Uh, it's a little different in that it has a skull over the door, I think, and it has a red sword on the minimap, or some kind of red icon. Uh, the difference in that room is you can only enter if you have one heart, one red heart. Blue hearts don't affect that room. And all the enemies you fight in that room are bosses. Uh, it does tend to drop better items, I think, or more chests or something. So, if you... If you don't have to spend a lot of red hearts to go in, it's worth going in. The, usually the time I would avoid it is if you have a large number of red hearts and no good reason to get rid of them or no way to get them back, uh, just because what you're going to get out of it is not going to be worth giving up all that health. see why I don't like the charge shot, charge shot here, because I'm just missing over and over again. I've kind of given up on breaking the poop and the fires just because it takes too long at this point, and I don't care for what's in them. I mean, I'm pretty sure nothing that they drop is going to be good. This is a mini-boss gluttony. Uh, mini-bosses can randomly spawn inside normal rooms in the dungeon, and they almost always drop something helpful for you. So, they're pretty good to encounter.
Keeping my eye out for tinted rocks, but I haven't seen any in a while. I'm also admittedly not very good at finding them past the basement, so it could just be that I've gone right past them and haven't noticed. This is another normal boss that has been just... it's a regular room at this point in the game. Uh, this room... I don't know what it's called. Normally it hurts you to enter and exit the room. Because I have flying, you only take damage when you enter, or when you exit. I don't know why. The devs just felt that was worth doing, so... cool to note. Uh, those, the room that I just took damage for entering typically has red chests inside of it. Red chests have both really good and really bad things. Um, it's kind of a gamble. In the case I got blue spiders that follow me around and help me. Uh, blue spiders or blue flies that you get deal damage equal to your current tiers multiplied by something. Um, the wiki would tell you the exact values, but they're good to have because they are... a big boost in damage, especially as your damage goes up, the flies and spiders do even more too. And they're irrelevant of your rate of fire, so certain things where if you can get really high damage and a slow rate of fire is good. Oh, thank god. Um, just another thing to keep in mind. So if anything that generates flies and spiders or several items that do, uh, very good. So back earlier I got a Ace of Spades, which is a special card denoted by its red border. Um, the Ace cards duplicate an item in your inventory. Uh, so Ace of Spades doubles the number of keys you have. I think Clubs doubles the number of bombs. Diamonds doubles the number of coins. And Hearts just heals you too. So it's a magnet. Magnetic Tears. The fuck? I've never gotten this item really weird. <clears throat> Anyways, so because I had zero keys and I use an ace of spades, which normally doubles it, it just gives you two. So if you have zero of whatever it gives, it'll give you two. I'm going to go into the shop and buy this because I can. One of the reasons I'm going into the shop, even though I don't really have a lot of stuff, um, is because I want to fill up the donation box. And the reason is that early on, when you fill up the donation box, it adds to this pool of money that the store uses for upgrades. So at certain milestones of donations, you get upgrades to your store. Uh, so it's good to, you know, put money in there, because the more upgraded your store is, the more items it will offer to you at a time. And it, I think it goes up to like five or six. So Monstro 2 is an interesting boss in that he has a very, very predictable attack plan. So he jumps once, jumps again. Um, I'm trying to see if I can kind of goad him into shooting his laser, because if he's shooting his laser, he just stands still. When he jumps, he does annoying stuff. So remember early on I said that uh, typically with bosses there's a way to trick them into getting hit with a bomb? Uh, for Monstro, that's the case. Uh, when he jumps in the air, he's going to land where you are. So as soon as you see him jump, you can drop a bomb, and most of the time he's going to land on the bomb. Uh, up there in the corner was a tinted rock. You could tell by the small X in the bottom right corner. Blew it up and I got two keys. Hooray! Oh man, my character looks fucked up now. Oh, here we go. Uh, I know I mentioned earlier the the rooms where you need only one heart to go in. And this is them. They have that cross swords with a skull, and it shows up as a bloody sword on the mini map. I think can't really tell what that is. Uh, I can't go in because I have more than one heart, and I'm not going to lose a bunch of hearts to go in there at this point of the game. It's just I'm not going to get anything that valuable. Oh, these even affect enemies. That's... Magnetic tears are really strange. So what's really funny about these is that monsters are also affected by spikes. 
<laughs> this is really weird. Interesting item. Um, so I can just kind of hover over the spikes because I can fly and they don't hit me. And the monsters will fly into them and get killed. Uh, the pill I just picked up is Are You a Wizard? Um, what that does is it gives you a kind of cross-eye effect and causes your bullets to shoot in a V instead of just the normal straight line. Uh, I would consider it a bad pill, but I guess the game considers it a neutral pill because it's not permanent, it's a temporary effect. So that's why I got it. The PhD doesn't remove neutral pills, just bad ones. So you can see there how I use the bombs on Chubb to really just kill him much faster than I normally could. These magnetic tears are really weirding me out because they make enemies move in strange ways. Uh, knights, you can only, these are called knights or knight heads, I guess, in this case, but you can only hit them from the back, so that's why I'm futzing around trying to get to the back of them. They're really annoying when you don't have some way to pierce through them because you have to do that obnoxious shit. Uh, some enemies make really annoying noises, this is the case. You'll notice I did a little juke between those two guys. Um, knowing how enemies are going to move and how, when you can duck between them and kind of keeping a quote-unquote global awareness of the room, like I did there, uh, that's going to keep you from taking damage a lot in the game. Just knowing like where enemies are, even though you're not really paying attention to them, you just kind of want to know roughly where they are and how they move so you can dodge them. There's another really good case there where I slipped between those two things. Such a strange item. I really can't get over it. So here is another boss in a room. This particular boss thing is really obnoxious just because it doesn't really do anything that dangerous and just has a bunch of health. Yeah, fuck you. Pretty much anything that burrows in this game or that can go into a state where you can't shoot it is in my opinion, a very annoying enemy, just because it takes a lot longer to kill. Um, I have plenty of bombs. So these blue and purple fires can only be put out with bombs. Um, the reason, that, that seems kind of, you know, why would you spend bombs just to put out a fire? Uh, the reason you do that is because blue and purple fires also have a pretty good chance of dropping those blue hearts. And so it's worth you know, blowing up them if you can efficiently. Uh, this is one of the special rooms I mentioned earlier where you need uh, keys to get in. It's not a shop, you can tell because it has two locks on it. It requires two keys to get in. Fortunately, I don't have two keys, so I'm just going to keep going. I think I'm at the end. Okay, this is the final boss of a first-time game. So this is the mom boss. Um, it kind of, I think, oh, Jesus. These magnetic tears are going to make this really hard. Okay, sorry, let me regain my composure here. Um, Mom kind of, I think, summarizes a lot of the core gameplay elements in that you need to be able to dodge effectively, you need to be able to deal with minions, you know, you're looking out for lots of different enemies all at once. Shit. Oh. Hmm. Okay, sorry, this got interesting. Um, so my cursed eye sent me into a gamble room. You can tell it has the big dice on it. Um, when I step over the dice, it will roll the dice, and depending on the result, it m might do some interesting things. Yeah! <laughs> so you notice now I'm completely different. Um, that's because the gamble room rolled the effect where it completely regenerates my character. All of my items are changed. 
and I got some... I don't even know what I have now. I know a few of them. Uh, luckily, this should make it actually really easy for me to deal with Mom. Because now I have regular tears instead of that stupid cursed eye. I got some kind of fear tier, too. Uh, gamble rooms are really risky if you have a good build, because if they re-roll all your good items into crap items, you just fucked up your run, pretty much. Um, I had the opposite case, basically, where I had, honestly, some pretty crappy items, and it didn't even necessarily give me good stuff, it just gave me... It got rid of those few bad items that were really holding me back. And that's the end. I'm going to skip the cutscene because you have to unlock that yourself. And that's how you beat a run on Binding of Isaac. Got a bunch of stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully I'll do some more of these in the future.